One one oh, you big fat hoe. Hello. Whoa. <laughs> How do you do, you big greasy hoe bag? It's yeah. us. Yeah. Is hoe problematic? I don't think so. Not when it's applied from one member of regular features to another. I was calling you a hoe. Oh, I thought you were talk- talking about hoes women. in general. Working women. <laughs> no, I was talking to you. You are a hoe. Good. Oh, way to bring sex workers into it, Steve. <laughs> Problematic. Oh, it's the most is... problematic episode of regular features yet. <laughs> hey, we should mention we'd kind of try and do this one as live because now and again we get to do the episodes way, way in advance. But this is not one of those times. No, we're no. recording it yesterday. Yeah, if you're listening to it on Thursday when it comes out, it's so essentially live. Yes, with a 24-hour delay, and we're just well. on our way to the GM <laughs> Where Hayes, the Games Media Awards, for which we've all been nominated. We have. And only one of us not invited, because my... That's me, by the way. In case you couldn't tell from the bitter lilt to my voice. Um, I wasn't directly and solely nominated for anything. Because, perhaps because I'm no longer a part of the games industry. You were not... still, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt you were nominated less. for OXM stuff, weren't you? OXM was nominated. Yeah. yeah. And Total Xbox, that's the thing. Yes. Before Just they the... shut that motherfucker down <laughs> as you're, well. You're, you're both, oh, you're both, you're all being very kind to me, but I, I understand. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spare wheel. I'm not, I'm not even a wheel. I'm, I'm a detached wheel that's been left in a delay by. Because <laughs> you're still rolling down the hill, I'm though. still rolling after the games industry, <laughs> bouncing hopelessly along, yes, but don't, don't, don't kid yourselves. I'm, I'm, I'm dead to you. Also, the podcast Daft Souls was um, nominated, and you've been on that, and Matt took the invitation for that, and I would say he's the worst thing on that motherfucking thing. He's the most, yeah, the most consistently <laughs> yeah. bad thing in the well, world. Well, he, he is the linchpin. But no one goes shipping. Oh, what a, what a lovely dress that is! Especially the linchpin that's holding it all together. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one, one has is. ever said that. Are you, no are you a tailor, Steve? I don't even know. What, <laughs> I, but I think I've demonstrated that I don't know what a linchpin is or where one might be used. <laughs> Isn't it in like ironworks? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, no one, no one says yeah. that's a lovely dress. Exactly. Look at the zip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fact I don't know even know what a linchpin is <laughs> demonstrates the log should have been invited. Log should not be. Matt. <laughs> yes. Well, also, I, I wheedled my way in anyway. I'm going. <laughs> and I'm going to fucking hurl abuse at everyone in there tonight. We do have uh, ambitious plans to try and record episode 111 tomorrow morning. Well, I'm staying at your house just so yeah. I can be here. So that's two people definitely here. You're the only person, Log, who well, fuck this up. I'm going to be here because I've got... Stuart will have to kick me out of the house because I didn't bring my set of keys. So I'll be on the streets tomorrow morning at nine o'clock with a... F- I dare say I'll have a hangover. <laughs> just a little drink because I, I, right. I will be drinking tonight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The GMAs is like I think like, we met before the GMAs, but I, it's the first time I think you fell in love with me. Um, I'm not sure if we told this story on the po- podcast before. Maybe this could be my feature. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the time that I met Locke. I fell in love with you over the over the office space when I asked Chris Scullion, "Who's that? Who's that hot guy?" I was, th- <laughs> I was thinking about this today actually when I was doing the dishes because I'm fo- I think I followed you on Twitter and then you sent Scullion an email going, "Who's that?" Presumably because you wanted to suck me off. Yeah, there was a certain element of my God, that's that's a hot gent. What hap- What? What if he's gay? What? What? I could yeah. be inside. <laughs> him. I don't, I know, why, inside. I don't know why I went to Scullion for all the hot gay <laughs> gods. <laughs> Chris Scullion. He's basically Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I anyway, know anyway, this. This what you're about to mention is the first time I thought you might actually be a cunt. <laughs> Yeah. To it. To it. <laughs> well, it was the first time that I think I'd been to anything properly uh, where there was a, a really, really free bar. Um, a really, really free bar. It was really free. Not just like wine and beer, like everything was free. And I, like, as you know, one, someone who likes booze, and two, someone who's Welsh. Like, if you say the words free bar, I just lose my mind. Still do. Like, and with good reason, because it's awesome. Um, but you'd won an award for... What? Well, I think I'd won a couple of awards that night. Did you? With you? It, was, it, was, it, was one of my be- it was one of my better years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Classic year. It wasn't it was, the year that, like... PC Zone won Legend oh, Awards was, yeah, as well, yeah, yeah, so like, yeah. and that was the year that Will Porter caused a kerfuffle by shouting "fuck PC Gamer" <laughs> <Did> <laughs> in a way that people didn't 
certain people at PC Gamer didn't find funny. <laughs> people tend not to find it funny when you say fuck X. Yeah. Like Gav, Gav, Gav's fuck you. Oh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, my yeah, my very first GMAs. I sat next to because uh, I wasn't I wasn't nominated for anything. But uh, the guy, like Neil Long, who was the editor of official Nintendo magazine at the time, said, "Would you like we can get you in if you want to come?" And I was like, "Yeah, that'd be awesome." But it meant I was sat on some fucking like dregs table uh, that Future had bought. So it was like, they, well, they bought like individual seats. So I was, it, I was with your <laughs> current boss, James Binns. Um, <laughs> have you just said the dregs table? Now let me name everyone who was sitting. <laughs> at the dregs. I don't, table. I don't mean dregs. I mean like it, it wasn't, you know, there was, was, wasn't enough people. people so you, it I guess so, yeah, you yeah. bought their place. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, but it wasn't enough. You hadn't bought enough that you could have like future publishing's table because that didn't happen. So it was like, it was your current boss, James Binns. It was uh, the old, one of the old board members of future publishing, two other board members of future publishing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Me and Alex Simwise. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's I'm some sorry. photos of me and Simwise fucking tearing shit up that night. <laughs> well, you, need to, you and Alex Simwise are extremely compatible. Yeah. Mm. She, she will happily post pictures of her anus. It's like, with with as with as little thought to the consequences as you post Snapchats of your dick. That's when oh, that's when mine and her friendship started, and it's still going very strong to these cool. day, to this day. You said that uh, your friend Sarah will Patreon us if I send her a picture of my dick. So I've been thinking I wanted I wanted to be something really really special. Yeah, so that, that's the kind of level we have to go for. Hmm. She hasn't had to be on Snapchat yet, so no, I'm not I sure how much I she told, actually thinks that's real. I told her to add you on Snapchat. I gave her your Snapchat details. Mm-hmm. Because well, it's, it's fair play. We would do anything for a new patron, including just Gav would do something that he does regularly ten times a day t- for free. For free, exactly. Yeah. If yeah, I can yeah, make yeah. him money for it, that's the exactly. fucking dream, isn't it? That's why we switched this Patreon thing on in the fucking first place. It's just like, oh, wait, we've been doing it for free. We're gonna be doing it for money. <laughs> um, but yeah, on the on the evening of that GMAs, anyway, I was I, like absolutely trolled, and I, you remember this better than me. Well, I, I just remember you coming up to me and saying, look at you, Bertie Big Bollocks, or something to that regard, <laughs> with all your awards. You think you're pretty fucking good, don't you? Then you put my glass of wine out of my hand and smashed it on the floor. <laughs> How many times have we met at that point? Maybe Very, very few, uh, <laughs> Not enough. On one hand figures is like... The, and it's that's just, fucking insane. That's pretty good. I mean, I was like... I was quite. If someone does me, I don't I wasn't, know what I I wasn't unhappy about it because it was a free bar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but That's at like, the same time, it did seem to be somewhat indicative that any future relationship or friendship we might have based might, on be fear. Le- might be yeah might be less around the sexy department and more of me living in constant fear of you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and what you might do next? Hmm. Well, like that is. I mean, obviously, I apologise for that. Retrospectively. I like to think that you saw <coughs> Log from across the crowded room and thought he'll love this. He'll like he'll this, love this. And if he doesn't, he's not someone I want to have an affinity with. Well, yeah, I, I well, think I was going for a laugh. I, I was like, whoa, whoa. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you were like, whoa. Oh, whoa. I, was, I was all like, yeah. I, I was like, whoa, and, and you were whoa. like, whoa, and I was like, yeah, dude. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's pretty much the explanation. That's, yeah, I'm fine. Well, I'm then, fine with it. To this day, it doesn't bother me or haunt me. Good. <laughs> yeah. well, I just unless I am going to the GMAs with you tonight, but I'm not going to win anything. Maybe you'll win something tonight, Gav. You'll smash something out of my hand. Can you imagine it? You should start doing that. You should start smashing my drinks out of my hand. And people will be like, Log's gone off the fucking rail since he left the games industry. <laughs> that was the anchor that was holding him down. Now he's gone fucking mad. <laughs> look at him. Look at his eyes. <laughs> you can see him smashing your bag. <laughs> I've got my fucking awards. Where's the award for best pub? <laughs> There isn't. Well, there is one, but we. I don't think we're going to win it. Camera. Yes. You should start going to the oh, yeah. camera awards, right? Right. I don't think they have snazzy ceremonies. I think. Can I start? If they give you an award, I think they expect to be able to come to your pub and sort of like have the room for free. Oh, oh think, shit! Yeah. Uh, yeah. The camera's not. It's like the best venue awards. Yeah. Best. Most. Best. Place Scott most Jag. willing to let us use all their rooms. <laughs> <laughs> while we, while we drink for the awards awards yeah. <laughs> while we drink halves and bitch about your beer <laughs> most skylights <laughs> oh and Gav didn't you foreshadow a fuck yogs cast thing earlier well I mean when a year later flash forward a year later log yeah. there we there we are <laughs> 
turning up now the best of friends and colleagues I dare say um, because we were making video series together which is pretty much I mean let's face it the exact same video series you were making at IGN when you won the award for that yes so, to the point where Stuart Reed, the guy who made those openly snarled <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah and then so we won uh, and again out of my fucking tree uh, went up on stage and we were nominated against, uh, obviously at the time, we were a little outfit. We had no, we had no business knowing how big they would become. Said the words, uh, fuck Yogscast. Oh, they were already massive. They were that fucking, time. yeah, way we, bigger than us, yeah. To the point where, what are you even yeah. doing trying to suck up to this industry that's already dying? You're, you're yeah. in your ascendancy and here you are wanting to be part of a exactly. moribund and format. You, you were definitely punching upwards. That was, <laughs> yeah, I think that was yeah. a lot of it, yeah. But they, they, they've just got these weird feelings. Why do you need us to legitimise you? You are legitimate on your own terms, even if you are a bunch of cunts. I think if you can't see that that is a joke, then you're as bad as maybe if I smashed up a glass of wine out of your hands and you can't see that that's a joke either. Yeah, yeah. Like, basically... <laughs> what is a joke? Why don't you tell us what's a fucking joke? <laughs> Have you seen the film The Purge? Because that's how I treat the GMAs. Like, good old year, and then go fucking bonkers. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you laugh after doing something, then it's probably a joke. Yeah. That's like saying JK on the internet. If JK, <laughs> JK, bro. If smashing a drink out of your hand isn't a joke, and saying fuck you isn't a joke, well, I don't even know what a joke is. <laughs> well, I don't even want to get jokes. <laughs> fuck jokes. <laughs> There you go. So, we should probably think about getting to these Games Media Awards tonight. Gasp, Gav, you're over. Steve, do your feature. Log, I know your feature is Gamergate related. Oh, yes. Gamergate being the ongoing internet cool. scandal, which is... Uh, the rigorously fact. investigating ethics in journalism. Yes. The bizarre side effect of terrorising women on a near constant basis. Well, you don't make a justice omelette without <laughs> harassing a few women eggs. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's quite, I think it's quite interesting to do this feature because I'm sh hopefully there's a lot of people who aren't gamers who listen to our podcast and will be going like, what? Because like, if you try and explain what Gamergate is to someone who is not a gamer, oh. who's not in that world, like when you look in their face and they're literally just like, what's wrong with you? No, it really is. I've tried explaining it to two or three people in the pub, including one person who is a journalist, mm -hmm. thinking, surely you'll, you'll get this. But words begin to fail you as you yeah. realise how stupid you sound. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, it's, its origins are based on a jilted ex-boyfriend who... Who sounds like an... I'd love to fucking meet that dude. Oh my God, I'd just love to just put my hand over his mouth and slowly chew through his nose and entire <laughs> fucking face. When you when you write about Gamergate on the internet, a number of strange things happen. If you criticise Gamergate or threaten Gamergate as a movement, they pop up and say things like, well, why do you hate women so much? Yes. Because Gamergate includes women. And I've one thing I've noticed with as I was mentioning to you earlier, that when you have someone saying something anti gamergate, people will say things like, Well I'm a black gay gamer and <laughs> I've received yes. a lot of harassment from anti gamer gators and I and I saw it in the same thread it was I'm a disabled lesbian gamer yeah. and I've received a lot of harassment from yes. anti gamer so gators. So it goes both ways. Yeah. Yes. I'm a, I'm a floating egg. Perhaps there's no <laughs> right or wrong here. <laughs> but I do so enjoy taking things out of context and weaponizing um, in like snippets of speech to use against people that they feel disagree with their 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 hate campaign against against women. Yeah. So, so I thought I would offer them for their benefit because I think they're now on the losing side. I think they're beginning to burn out. There's the. Do you think they realise they're losing? The stop Gamergate movement is is pretty much is 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 uh, is dampening their voice quite quickly. Mm. So I thought they need a little bit of ammunition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out several things. Okay. That I genuinely believe, but in a way that if you carefully edited the sound files, you could hear me saying something abhorrent. Something that I absolutely okay. do not agree with. 
Fair play. And they're good at editing because they live on computers and stuff. So. Exactly. So here's an, here's a, here's an example. This, this has already happened to you, hasn't it? You've said you've been making jokes on Twitter and people have been oh, contacting yes. your boss trying to get you sacked for like... He's yes. literally threatening to kill all gamers. I did say that I Is would kill... Is this professional? <laughs> I would kill every gamer in the world using my fists and legs. And that was construed as a legitimate and credible threat to murder... Millions, if not a billion, billion. people. Well, I just want you to do have arms and legs. I so. do. Yes. I'm a gamer, and my surname begins with two A's. I'm just wanting to know: Am I first on this list? Because I feel legitimately threatened. People, so yeah, people would reply to me directly, threatening to kill me, and not not seeing the difference between. And Did someone replies you with a gun. Someone just an upside down <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> the gun. Here's a picture of my gun that I will shoot you with. But it was an it was an upside down shotgun. See, I hadn't even done it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like as soon as I work out how to go, that's the right way around. <laughs> you planned on gonna... firing it that way. Oh. <laughs> yeah, technically, he's fine. <laughs> he's just going to hit you with the end of it. Oh, I wish I could shoot you with this one, but I don't know how to turn it around. But yeah, that's, there's a difference between saying you're going to kill every person in the world, not directing that at an individual yeah. and then telling an actual individual i.e. Like me that you're going to kill them yeah. like one is one of those could be reported to the police and acted upon by the authorities yes <laughs> and it's not my one <laughs> <laughs> wait what? and the other is some doofus showing off for followers <laughs> exactly <laughs> so here are some things for the game and game movement that they can use against me if, if, if you like um, so here, here's one I think ISIS is cool D- by the loose fitting robes that they wear because Iraq is very hot all year round. Nice. ISIS is cool. Duh. Duh. Down. <laughs> cool. Yes, yes. Down. So, oh no, now you can isolate me as well. <laughs> oh, this is I wish show. I was editing this one now. Then <laughs> 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 be like, whoa, Steve. <laughs> okay, there's another one. The Hillsborough disaster was brilliant at demonstrating the need for proper police training and crowd control at events to avoid tragic loss of life. Well, let's hope that the Reverend Stuart Campbell isn't listening to that because he thinks it was all their own stupid fucking fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Barack Obama shouldn't be the President of America because he's black. Whoa. He should be President of America because he's the best man for the job. Nice. Hey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I'd love to think that someone listened to this who's like generally on the fence about uh, gaming games. Like, whoa, what the fuck? Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, my oh, my God. oh, my Christ. I thought, uh, oh, Jesus. 9 11 was great. Because terrorism really frustrates me. Oh, it, it's a it's a real bugbear for me too. It was, yeah. When the second tower fell, was, that was grating. It's like more of this. Oh, oh god, I'm fed up with this now. Fed up. This sick of it. This is quite enough. <laughs> In fact, when the second tower fell, I jumped for joy. S- James Joyce's Ulysses, my favourite book, which I keep on my top shelf and turn to for comfort and moments of deep shock and sorrow. <laughs> and your, your, your top shelf is high enough that you do need to jump for it as well. Yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you, didn't have, you didn't have time to slide along a poof and stand on that. <laughs> slide along a poof. <laughs> That's <my laughs> Good. Osama bin Laden is my friend. Lee, reminder that truly evil people can exist. Ah... Uh... Nice. Good. And that, so that, that they can feel free to use any one of those sentiments. How do we get in, this to them? The, non-completion. Like, how do we get this one to make sure this definitely happens? Just use the hashtag. They fucking jump on it. It's, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, shall, the, shall the title of this episode be the... Hashtag Game, Game Gate. Hashtag, hashtag Game yeah. Gate. Mm, maybe not. Cause then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, nah. they could actually go back and listen to really horrible yeah. things we have done and said. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> yeah, early in this podcast. Like with Roger, <laughs> with Roger Helmer. Who is in the news this oh, week? Yes, oh, shit. We haven't even mentioned it. We haven't mentioned Roger Helmer yet. <laughs> About 17 people. That's not an exaggeration that yeah. emailed me and tweeted me and Facebooked me saying look what Roger Helmer's yeah. doing right. Roger Helmer you know sometimes when you update the Twitter app then it, it knocks back all your settings to like the year dot where so <laughs> like you start getting notifications again like if you've turned off notifications when you update you start getting stuff through and it was I think it was like Saturday night or like early I think it was like, yeah Friday night like early Saturday morning I started my phone was just going fucking mental mm. with uh, people tweeting the regular features account and tweeting me going look at 
Yeah, for fucking seeing that. It's amazing. What's he been doing? Well, for a, for a man who said that gay people are undermining the sanctity of marriage, you'd be surprised at what Steve's going to tell you that he did. <laughs> How long can we give this guy? <laughs> UKIP MEP Roger Helmer, a married man, went to a sexy massage parlour where mm. sex happens. No one says, no one has said that he had... <coughs> Sorry, I'm... Oh, my God. I'm getting really emotional. It's all about that. Stop it. Stop, stop. We're done. Poor We're done. wife. <laughs> <laughs> he, him and Nigel Farage... Celebrating the victory in the Clacton by election. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice election, Nigel. Would you like to celebrate in our usual way? I Let's go get wanked, wanked off. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a knot in my back that I want to get shot of, and then I want a woman to take her tits out. <laughs> to press her balls against my tits. Nope. I've got those two things the wrong way around. Yeah. Carry on. Well, carry they probably on. have balls if, if you ask for them. Oh yes, massage balls. <laughs> yeah, you can pay for anything. Or spin yeah, balls. Yeah. So that's that's what he did. Um, I haven't really had much time to absorb the knowledge, the information. I haven't lived in a state of shock like yeah. I am. I think. But he has appealed for privacy, so maybe we shouldn't mention it anymore. That's true. Yeah. Respect Roger Helmer's privacy. Unless, <laughs> unless we want to do another newsletter. Yeah. Outlining oh. what he had done to him. In oh. that parlour. We do have a live podcast coming up, Steve. You need to come up with something really, really good. That could be it. Would you like to... I, just to put this sordid matter to rest, I would like to outline exactly what happened in that massage parlour. In it's a comic happening. strip. <laughs> Guys, watch this space. Yes! The newsletter's coming back. Come on, boys! <laughs> this is, I'm so chuffed. Oh, come on. <laughs> Isn't this like we're dangerous again? <laughs> Regular feature. Yes. What's the next one? Bum 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 bum. I hope it's something about Gabby's bum. Bum 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 bum. His two buttocks as sweet as roses, between which the girls will stick their noses. Thank you very much. Silence, please, for my feature, which is, does Matt hate widows? Oh. Matt's not here today, and that could be for one of two reasons. One is the reason that he gave us, which is that he's got some serious personal issues that he needs to tend to, and that's that are outside the, the realm of joking about. At the moment. For now. The other is, perhaps he's in hiding after calling all widows scum. Oh. He, is, he does say a lot of shit stuff on the internet, so... Well, yeah, I mean, this is, um, you guys may have noticed that Gamergate recently entered the mentions of um, regular features when um, a brave Gamergater called Ennis568 <laughs> mentioned that Matt Lees had been abusing his own subreddit to call widows scum. I always thought it was a vehicle for his hatred of widows. <laughs> There's something about bereaved women they that Matt so Lees... Much. It just, he just can't stand. It, I mean, sorry, carry on. No, no, I was going to say, I was just going to say what I said earlier, but in the hangout when he, he literally outlined what had happened, I said, sounds like you're in the wrong there. And he said, well, in, my, in my before, defense... Before you judge him about something to which the readers know nothing about, okay, sorry, let yeah, me explain yeah. what happened. But first, let me give you Ennis 568s bio on Twitter. Former left-wing scumbag, now an expensive customer. Probably drunk, but not Lee Alexander drunk. Shit at games. Former left-wing scumbag. You know, he knows what it's like to be left-wing. Hmm. So yeah. Anyway, oh, yeah. let's leave that to one side. Let's leave that. Let's not judge him too harshly. Oh, like now. he's grown up. Well, yeah. come. Well, yeah. Then I grew up. Okay. And a young man who is not a liberal has no heart. An old man who is not a conservative has no brain. That some cunt said that. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Well, I promised Ennis568, I asked him what was going on, I engaged with him. Really? Because I think all Gamergators deserve sincere engagement. Not from the mm. official account, you better not have. From my personal account. Good. Oh, good, yeah. Keep that shit off our fucking <laughs> But thing. I did promise him an explanation as to what was going on in the next issue of Regular Features. Mm. And I'm going to do my best to give him the explanation that every Gamergator deserves. Yeah. 
Matt, Matt, what happens, right, if... Because <laughs> as much as I hate the Gamer Gate people, I do really love all the money that we get from Patreon, although we haven't had any of them yet. But what happens... What would you do if 80% of those people I think give us anyone, money are Gamer Gate? If anyone listens to this podcast and is a Gamer Gator... Fuck off. They are quite welcome to fuck right off or, and take their or shit Or increase money with them. their. Do you know what would really yeah, annoy you? Do know, you know what would really oh, fucking like, get yeah, me, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, leaving, why, that's, but, that's what I want. That's what I want. But, like, imagine, imagine like, I don't know, increasing your uh, the money to, I don't, uh, I don't know, like 200, $200 a month or something. That would fucking wind me up me. so much. Yeah, I hate being Because that would poisonous like, like, money. Mm. And oh, every time I spent it on, imagine. like, soap for my balls, I'd think oh, I'm wiping my balls on dirty soap. I wouldn't wash. I'd rather Steam. not I just, wash just accumulate those really expensive soap and not use it. It would feel like terrible. The Silas Mana of soaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, when a villain comes into a, a, a hero's hospital ward and then picks up the saline drip and holds it as if he could squeeze it and make all of his veins um, explode and go, oh, um, I'm the one who's uh, uh, holding your saline drip stroke funding you on Patreon and yeah. I can stop this yeah. whenever I if like. If you want yeah. to be the Gus Fring of our podcast, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> anyway, Matt Lee's subreddit is a place that he set up to put a little cool down step between YouTube comments and people who wanted to discuss his videos. Over the last couple of weeks, you might remember Matt's been saying that people have joined up just to say things like, I'm a Matt Lee's fan, but I'm very concerned about his recent work. And these people, Matt claims... That was me. Uh, oh yeah. Matt claims they're Asian provocateurs dressing up as a fr- sort of like the enemy dressing up as a friend and trying to start a little internal agitation mm. what anyway, if it was just people just really don't like Matt he hasn't even considered that well that's a bit of a coincidence isn't it people not liking Matt <laughs> and other things happening in the world at the same time <laughs> Anyway, during recent months, one of these <coughs> recent weeks, one of these people asked Matt about Christina Summers. And I don't know if you know about Christina Summers. I don't. She's an anti-feminist writer who wrote books like The War on Baby Boys and I Will Not Look Past the Rush of Endorph... <laughs> I choose not to question the rush of endorphins my brain gives me when I obey men and shit on other women. <laughs> And her third and most recent book, I love how this oppressive system will richly reward prominent members of an oppressed group who cynically deny their own oppression. How's that one doing? She's doing, yes. she's doing really well. And she's getting <laughs> a lot of money from Fox News to talk about That's it. That's working out really well for her right now. Matt's response to that question was that she is scum. Mrs. Summer's husband died the week before this comment. Oh, oh Matt. Matt! Matt! You fucking cunt. And that following rules of strict and obvious logic, that makes Matt's comment a direct slam on widows yeah. throughout time. All widows, backwards and forwards, and sideways through time. Yeah, and diagonally like the great glass elevator Trans- throughout time. <laughs> Trans-dimensional widows. Women who are yet to, who will never become widows, but in alternate realities have had their husbands die. Well, naturally, anyone, we've all... We're all widows in that respect, because in the infinite number of universes, Matt, what is wrong with you? <laughs> he hates himself. Well, yeah. Yeah. I've never known a man to be capable of an infinite well of hate. What an oh. asshole. Well, naturally, this infinite well of hate enraged Ennis568, who posted a link to the regular features iTunes page saying, let's tell these people what we think of people who call widows scum. Oh. I can't have time for that. No. <laughs> the guy's like, let's look at this is what they said, and this is their podcast. Like, who's rated their five stars? Oh, fucking no, don't rate your five stars, you assholes. I mean, that's not why we are here. <laughs> I mean, I'm all for free speech, but when it comes to negative reviews of our podcast, I am opposed Shut to free down. speech. Shut it down, yeah. iTunes. Yeah. Also, get rid of free speech when it comes to five star reviews on iTunes. By the way, if you're listening to this, please rate and review us on iTunes. <laughs> So I have to ask, is this the latest in a long line of anti-widow propaganda put about by Matt Lees? I looked through some screenshots of Matt Lees' tweets that no one can prove that aren't knocked up in Photoshop because I copied the fonts exactly right. (laughs) This from Matt Lees. Just saw a widow on the tube, jammed my fingers down my throat and puked on her veil. Jesus Christ. This from Matt Lees, just one week later. Just slapped my balls against the window of a hearse. 
Hope there were some widows in there. Fucking hell. What does widow stand for? Wow, I'm dumb or what? Jesus. That's not even a proper joke, Matt. No. It's, it's just hate. It's just raw hate. I haven't and even noticed any of this. To be fair, I don't think widows should be wearing the veil. Why? I think because it stops you gobbing in their stupid <laughs> widow faces. <laughs> That's precisely why. <laughs> Not content with the public face of Matt Lee's anti-widow sentiments, I decided to dig deeper. And that's when journalism really started to happen. I discovered this poem that no one can prove that Matt Lee's didn't write. Hey lady, where's your husband? Oh, he's dead. Lol. Why don't you go and fuck a hearse or something? I mean, it's not like your husband's going to complain. Jesus. That shocking poetry caused me to do some real journalism and you'll be shocked at how deep the rabbit hole goes. I've been already shocked a number of times. <laughs> I'm just glad he's not here. Yeah. Think, think back to when it's 568's Twitter bioed. The one I told you to put to one side. Now bring it back onto the front burner. Shit. He said he was drunk, but not Lee Alexander drunk. What does that mean? Alexander is a clear reference to Alexander the Great, one of the most brilliant warriors of all time. But Lee is another word for protective shelter, or a shield. Could it be that Lee Alexander is a shield for someone who sees himself as a great warrior, a social justice warrior, who's drunk on his own power? Oh, not Matt Lee's himself. Uh, false flag. Stop the recording. <laughs> At this point, you can see that I was in really deep in the rabbit hole, and that's when I started to do some real journalism. I began to realise that Game & Gate wasn't all that it seemed. The whole thing felt like a false flag operation designed to make women seem more harassed than they previously were by harassing the shit out of them and threatening them in really fucking horrible ways. So that's when I decided to do some real journalism. I went undercover as a widow, and I hung around outside Matt Lee's home. Mm -hmm. Within 20 minutes, Matt had appeared at the crenellations of his Patreon-funded castle in Scotland, and had ordered dozens of his supporters to open fire on me with crossbows. Oh. This is just one example of Matt Lee's firing crossbows on people who disagree with him. There are dozens more that I will never offer evidence of out of respect for the victims. I asked him why he was buying all them crossbows and he said for a video. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought they'd be used like this. You're buying a crossbow on Amazon, Matt. But why are you choosing quantity 100, Matt? <laughs> you meant to put one, right? One. Just that's all you need, Matt, for the video. <laughs> It was then something happened that absolutely blew my mind, mm. precipitating a chain of ongoing serious journalism that blew how deep the rabbit hole really went. Matt Lees came out dressed as a widow and started saying really racist things. <sighs> Fucking hell. You know, black widow spiders, he said. They're called that because black women are more like spiders than they are humans. Black <laughs> Black women skitter around on the floor and need to be trapped under cups. You know when <laughs> Steve did his feature about like ways that people could take things out of context that you're saying? <laughs> like, this is just that. <laughs> because you're doing your voice even though you're saying that it's Matt. I should have been putting on my Matt Lee's voice. Yeah, should so I'll say it again in Matt Lee's voice. Black women skitter around on the floor and need to be trapped under cups. I couldn't believe it. Matt Lees was trying to turn public opinion against widows by flying around on a jetpack. I hadn't mentioned the jetpack yet. And being really racist, dressed as a widow. I was outraged. And that's when I realised that this rabbit hole went deeper than I'd ever considered possible. Mm. And I was going to need to do some real journalism. <laughs> So I dressed up as a spider and infiltrated a sp series of webs in Somerset. And it was there, after six months of spinning webs, eating flies, and producing a string of popular YouTube videos, that I was invited behind a pail of hay and introduced to the massive spider in charge of Somerset District of Social Justice Warrior Arachnids. It was Matt Lees oh, in his primal hell. spider form. Oh, fuck me. And yeah. he was dressed as me. What a fucking wind yeah. up! <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Matt Lee's spider said he was a big fan of my work, but the fact that I was dressed as a spider was problematic, and I needed to apologise to all the other spiders, or no one could ever really respect my opinion. Holy shit. It's just it's the hypocrisy. 
Can you see it? <laughs> no. Just, I saw each of his legs tweeting about me from a different account with 34 followers and an anime avatar. Oh. His patron spiders began weaving a web around my legs and singing about how they would lay their eggs in my eyeballs. I kicked myself free of their webs, which is one of the benefits of being a big six foot man in, this, in a world of tiny spiders. You're six foot. <laughs> I am five foot eleven and a half, you bitch. Not, <laughs> Give me the so not round six up. foot then. Oh, round it up. I'm what, 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 what even are you? What I feel are like you I'm gang? focusing on the wrong part of this story. <laughs> <laughs> I blew a kiss to my spider girlfriend who I'd been dating to maintain my cover and I ran from that barn in Somerset past Matt's cattle in Scotland cattle? He, he kept cattle of course he did what castle doesn't have cattle exactly. it's just part yeah. of the ecology of a castle yeah. it comes Picture, with it what's the mistake? Yeah. What? it comes with a castle I yeah I think if you buy the castle you get a fucking cow yeah. you get a pregnant cow and you have to deal with it <laughs> that's the tax <laughs> Then I turned around, came back to your flat in London, Steve, and I'm too scared to carry on my investigation now. But if anyone does want to carry on that investigation, like they, like the Guardian did with Matt's last week, journalistic investigation into the Love School, then feel free. If I see this in the Guardian next week, I know you are stealing all your stuff from us. There were several investigations into that Love School that led me to believe that Matt took it from them. Probably took it from them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, okay. If we're not the first thing that ever happened in the universe, then perhaps we should just fold up this podcast right now. <laughs> I felt really bad about that because uh, it was the time where I had to edit that one. I was like, oh, guys, I'm going to have to do this in like 10 minutes, so everyone's features are pretty much going in full on. And uh, there was a tweet the regular features ago going, why didn't anyone stop Matt? <laughs> <laughs> it's because he was speaking too much truth. That's why, guys. Yeah. All right? So if you can't handle it... Fuck off, to unless you patron us and then stay. That is why we put Matt as the last feature, though, because you can turn off whenever you like, really, yeah, can't yeah, you? Yeah, you <laughs> <our> <laughs> That's why out. we should start doing all the Patreon stuff right to the beginning of the podcast, oh, rather yeah, than at the shit. end. I haven't thought about that. We haven't thought this through. But if you're still here, yeah, because that was good. Well, then... that was both a spoof of Gamergate and Matt Lee's. I think you'll all be... That's that fine. Irony folded into irony. Yeah, and that's why I escaped largely unscathed from Game Gate because I'm so. Fuck, you can never work out what my point is. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. so scared of making one. You're, just, you're a slippery. Yeah, I'm an eel. I'm a. I'm an eel in, in, in you. I'm a, <laughs> you're an eel in threadless clothing. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm nudging at your bum bum. Hey, if you like that feature, why not pay you for the next one? <clears throat> By going to www.patreon.com forward slash regular features. Yes. That's a way that you can support us. <laughs> and yeah, basically, it's the least you could do. We we go out of our way to have a nice time with each other on your behalf. And f- We're two weeks away from our live podcast, and if you've missed out on tickets, well, you can still listen to it, but it won't be the same. Shove it up your ass, because there's no, no tickets left. No, it's on, no, we have to be nice, though. Oh, I've always seen this. <laughs> <laughs> You're either, like, good cop or bad cop. Yeah. You're never, like, grey cop. No, like grey cop. <laughs> But if you're coming, we can't wait to see you. And if you're not coming, then we can't wait you for you to uh, hear it. If you don't have a ticket, just come anyway. We'll, we'll let you in. Yeah, we know the guy on the door. <laughs> it's locked. <laughs> well, don't say that because I'm not, I'm not certain yet. What can I say? I'm not certain. I can't give them free tickets. Do you have an entertainment license? I can't license. tell them. <laughs> but if you are coming to our live podcast, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be the best thing you've ever seen. And I've seen Beyonce, so imagine that. <laughs> Is it Beyonce? <laughs> well, there will be more live shows, I'm sure. I think what we should do, and I've had this idea on the way here, and I haven't asked you a lot about it, but I think for the next Tombola, what we should do is Tombola person's name, wherever that person's... Free ticket! No, wherever that person's name is from, we organise a live podcast in that town. It's a bad idea, again. It's a good idea. We had to send send a postcard to fucking... We just Oh yeah, we're not doing it on fucking Australia or anywhere that's not in somewhere we can drive, because you're going to pass your driving test, so you can drive us there. It can be all a big thing. See, it's a good idea. So in your front room. Well, you have to win it then, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're well, in my his front room. room. No, no, room right right the winner's front room. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I'm saying you to the microphone and the readers. I really didn't get yeah. that. You're staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, log, what are you in my front when room? When you're addressing the readers, look at the laptop. <laughs> look at Audacity. Look into the, the microphone. Window. Fuck it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's what we should do for the next one. At the, we'll do it at the live event. We'll do a live tombola, and whoever wins... That's where the next live show will be. That's a good idea. 
But people won't be able to get to these weird villages where everyone Why lives. Why do you assume that we have weird people who live, live in weird places? They could just why, live you, in... why are you assuming we're not going to fix it so it's a nice town? <laughs> you might be like, Nottingham! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Same <laughs> place! See you in a month. It's going to be double in price. <laughs> <laughs> King Billy for life! <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. If the next episode you hear, we're all extremely hungover. That's because you recorded it the next day. We'll probably tell you this the next episode. If it's not, then it means you didn't do that. We're definitely doing that. 